Welcome to Catherine Favor Worldwide Evangelical Outreach, where we are passionately committed to spreading the timeless message of Christ's love and teaching. Join us on this inspiring journey as we walk hand in hand in embracing the beauty of faith through the transformative power of the gospel from God's masterpiece evangelist Catherine Favor. I welcome everyone today to our daily devotion. I exalt the name of the Most High God. In everything he's doing for us, he has been so merciful. He has been so kind. He has been so compassionate in everything that pertains to us. Each day of our life, we are alive today. Brethren, his mercy is over us. That grace is over us. We do not look down on all that the Lord is doing for us. We do not look at our own power. We cannot do it because it's only in him our shield of protection stands. His mercy protects us. If not for the blood of Jesus, where would we have been today? I welcome you today. Our topic in this daily devotion is Mercy Speaks. Sometimes when we look at ourselves, we do not deserve to be alive. So many errors and mistakes, when we come to realize our errors, we come to see the hand of God. His mercy has been carrying us. We come to realize that his mercy has been speaking and intervening for us. Brethren, the mercy of God is speaking in your life today. The mercy of God is leading and directing. The mercy of God is intervening. How do we know? We see his compassion. We see his love. We do not deserve this life. Honestly, we are alive by his mercy. A lot of people boast with what they have. A lot of people boast because of their beauty or their look. A lot of people boast because of the opportunities and connections they have in life. A lot of people boast even by weapons they use to war and fight people. They don't know that the mercy of God is keeping them up to today. Brethren, today let us look at the fact that the mercy of God speaks. The born again that is merciful shall obtain mercy by the mercy of God. If we look at our brothers and sisters, somebody must have done something to you but you still have the mind to let it go. What goes in there is the love of God that have been shared abroad have touched this heart to forgive and let it go. Because you know, when we forgive and show mercy to those that hurt us, we don't retaliate. We don't go for vengeance. We leave it with God. With love in our heart because we do not wish that person what they even wish for us. I'm telling you, that is mercy. The mercy of God will speak for you. It takes the heart that have received Christ to just let it go and don't go for vengeance for vengeance. The mercy of God intervenes and speak for you in Jesus' name. Because God's divine love has been extended to them. They have the work of the Holy Spirit in them producing a mercy that defies explanation by unregenerated men. You will see somebody that is regenerated have already received Christ and have this love of God, knowing that they have compassion from the Lord. So when they treat their brothers and sisters, they treat them that they are dealing with God. And when you look at your brother and your sister that you are dealing with God, honestly, you tend to see that you don't even have mind for vengeance to pay back because the love of God has convicted this heart. The Holy Spirit has shed abroad. That's why Jesus said it on the cross. Even Jesus himself became the ultimate example, yes, of this. When he cried on the cross, from the cross, forgive, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's in the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 34. So if we look at it today, as we rise up each day, so many sins, so many things we are doing, but if we look at it from the throne of grace, from the hand of God, you see 
what Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You see, a lot of people do commit so many atrocities, shed blood, many do things out of ignorance. The mercy of God will continue to speak, reaching out for this person. Even when danger will come as a result of what they've exposed themselves into the mercy of God speak, they will not be destroyed by those things they did. The mercy of God will continue to stretch and reach every life, brethren. The mercy of God speaks because a lot of people, each day, sometimes, there are things we do, we don't even know the detriment of what we are doing. Out of ignorance, the mercy of God continues to speak. In Christ, we imitate God to have mercy on those who hurt us because we do not deserve God's forgiveness. Love and mercy we experience every day. God has been compassionate that his anger did not kill us when we were yet sinners and his son Jesus died for us. That's the mercy of God. When we were in sin, in ignorance, the mercy of God has been speaking. The mercy of God remains. And the compassionate love of God reached out for us, for us to accept Jesus. Jesus died for us when we were even yet sinners. Isn't God awesome? So we show mercy and compassion as the mercy of God speaks and intervenes when he waited patiently for our repentance, shows God's character of long suffering because we were ignorant and to some, his mercy shower over the ungodly, giving them opportunity for repentance. Everybody have opportunity. I'm telling you, nobody died today that have not accepted Christ. From the time Jesus died, the time of grace, God gives his children opportunity. Opportunity to have that chance, a chance for second chance. The Lord give that opportunity. It's compassion, it's love. And you see his mercy keep intervening for every one of us. God is so faithful. God is so kind. There are so many things people will do to some people. They'll be targeting when they are going to revenge. They'll be targeting when they will go for vengeance. Something little thing will happen. We see somebody won't talk to this brother, won't talk to this sister. Then I ask, where is this mercy of God? When we say we are Christians, we bear grudges. We target when we are going to pay back for vengeance. Then my question is, where is the love of God? That mercy God shared over us. Even when we were yet sinners, he paid for the price for us. He died for us. So where is that love? It's so hard when we come across a lot of people that always want to fight vengeance for vengeance. They want to go eye for an eye. They will see some people bearing grudge for a long time, targeting somebody. Where is the mercy of God? This person is obtaining mercy from God, but not ready to show the mercy to another. That is not the life of a born again, honestly. God has been compassionate that his anger did not kill us when we were yet sinners and his son died for us. So we show mercy and compassion as the mercy of God speaks, intervenes. When he waited patiently for our repentance, shows God's character of long suffering because we were ignorant, honestly. And to some, his mercy shower over the ungodly, giving them opportunity for repentance. God gives everybody opportunity for repentance. Right then, the mercy of God goes further, further than we can imagine. The mercy of God goes far. I'm telling you. So there we see the mercy of God speaks. Some liars in the name of Christianity deceive people for self-gain, takes advantage of God's goodness, honestly, kindness, and mercy. Why God waits and gives them opportunity to do what? Repent. If we look at it today, the mercy of God continues to speak in the life of those that takes the grace of God for granted. The mercy of God still speaks. I'm telling you, there are some things that go on in your life. The way God 
the, the way it happens for you to have the opportunity to have those things, you see the mercy, the favor of God. And in the time of danger, mercy speaks. You know, mercy speaks that even though this person have been destroying so many things that is of God, the mercy of God still wait for this person to come to realize that what they were doing is wrong. You see, the long suffering of God, we experience it every day. The mercy of God speaks, brethren. The mercy of God speaks. So you see, a lot of people, they lie, pretend, steal from the innocent, deceive in the name of born again ministers. The mercy of God speaks when the thief and self-righteous human worshippers realize that they have been in a wrong teaching and doctrine, repent and cry to God for mercy. The mercy of God continues to speak. In this, we see a lot of people that are bombarded with false doctrine, false teaching, religious spirits manipulating and operating, using people to destroy and mess up people's destinies, futures, homes, marriages, people's lives. But you see the mercy of God be waiting for this person to come to know that what they've been operating with is a wrong teaching, wrong upbringing, wrong environment, wrong people around that have instituted so many fallacy in the life of this person. The mercy of God will continue to speak that this person will come to the point when this person will have the opportunity to, to know that what they are doing is wrong. It's now their choice to make decision. God gives everybody this opportunity. It will come to the point where this person will now make a decision. I want to remain in the truth or I want to remain in the lies. The mercy of God will continue to speak. The mercy of God carry people around so that they will not die before their time. Even though they live in sin, I'm telling you, atrocities in nations, atrocities in leadership, atrocities being happened. You see the mercy of God keep carrying people until for they come to the point where they realize that what they've been doing are wrong. It's them for choice. Just as Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. If we are given this willpower choice to make a decision, who we will we serve? Honestly. The mercy of God speaks. It carries you along. It carries us along to come to the point where we realize, oh, I've been a man of unclean lips. I've been living among people of unclean lips, just as in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. If you look at when the king Uzziah died in the life of Isaiah, he was able to come to see the truth. He was able to see himself and saw that, oh my goodness, I've been living in lies and I call myself a prophet. I've been living among people of unclean, of clean lips, and I call myself a prophet. What carried him along is just the mercy, the goodness of God. It's happening today, brethren. Some people look at the life they live. They want to bring the many open their mouth and condemn the time, this present time compared to the time Sodom and Gomorrah, the type of life someone Sodom and Gomorrah were living for God to destroy and cause that nation never existence compare it today the amount of gay lifestyle immoral lifestyle there are so many messages the lord is giving me they have created it that women will not remain in marriage the kingdom of darkness set its young girls not to consider natural marriage and you see some people take it as a law as a willpower a decision to live in this life type of life that god hates that made God to cause Sodom and Gomorrah. You ask me, why are these people still alive? Is the mercy of God. The mercy of God keep carrying them for them to come to the point and realize their error and repent. You see somebody that was a Christian, went back to their vomit, lived this immoral life, yet they are still alive. What is keeping them? The mercy of God. For them to come to understand the difference, the dirty lifestyle and the clean lifestyle. The dirty lifestyle God actually hates and the, the true lifestyle is of God. It's opportunity. God gives everyone the opportunity to make a choice. To live in God, in Christ Jesus, or just to live in sin, in a dirty life of Satan. It's a choice. When People come to this point, they make their choice. From the time they've been doing all these things, the mercy of God continue to speak. 
until they come to the point, they come to embrace the truth and make a decision to go to hell or to go to heaven. The mercy of God speaks, brethren. So if we look at it today, I see a lot of women. I see a lot of men. They abuse marriages. I see a lot of women because women are supposed to be fruitful. It, it, without women, we won't have life. People having life won't be in existence. There's no reproduction without women. Women don't know the power, the fruitfulness, the importance, the role they play in the kingdom of God. As we are here, because women are supposed to bear children for the glory of God that we worship God. Without the man, the woman will not bear the children. Without the woman, the man will not bear children. With women, we are women are fruitful, supposed to bear children that will serve God and fellowship, have divine fellowship with the Lord. But wait a minute, the enemy is moving drastically, drastically to counter this, making women to live a lesbian kind of life, making men to live a homosexual kind of life, so that reproduction will not happen, so that children that we serve God will not come in existence. The Lord sees all this, but this mercy of God continues to speak, reaching to the in-depth in the bringing them out, bringing them to on realize that this is a dirty life. It's not left for them to choose. Many, if not diseases, they will not repent. Mercy of God speaks, brethren. We do not take everything or anything or opportunity we have for granted. As we are sharing the word of God, fellowshipping together, we should not take it for granted. The mercy of God speaks. God is so faithful. The mercy of God speaks when the thief and self-righteous human worshippers realize that they have been in a wrong teaching and doctrine, repent and cry to God for mercy. But the hardened religious person operating with human nature to control and intimidate will realize when, they, when he or she ends up in total condemnation of fire and burning stone. They will think everything is palatable. They don't, they don't care. Only when they find themselves there. But what? The mercy of God will continue to speak, bring it to their notice that the life, whatever they are doing is wrong. If I look at the book of Luke 6, 36, be merciful just as your father is merciful. We show mercy for one another. Our God is a compassionate God, just as the book of one for one, Psalm, the book of Psalm one four five verse eight said, "The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love." Mm. This God that is so slow to anger, this God that is so rich in love, this God that is so gracious and compassionate, we must know one thing: He is a consuming fire. He is indeed a consuming fire. We don't take pride in what we have. We don't take pride in what God has granted us mercy and grace to have. People boast when God does something, they take the glory. A lot of people want to take glory in somebody's life. Do you know who I am? Do you know who you are talking to? After all, I did this, I did that. They want to take glory that they did something. I look at them at their emptiness. They don't know what it is to be under the mercy of God. The, the grace of God is carrying these people. That's why you see when some ministers pray for some people, they want to come. They want the people to come and praise them that they did this. They don't know Christ. If they know God, they won't take God's glory. The opportunity everyone has in life to live is the grace of God. And we must not take it for granted. Because when the air stops flowing, this life is gone. We live today. The mercy of God speaks, brethren. There are things that happen in our life. The way God go before us and make a way so that we will not dash our foot against the stone. That's what the book of Psalms said. The mercy of God will continue to speak. He go ahead of you. Make things easy for you. 
because his mercy will intervene even in when we are yet ungodly. Jesus died for us. The mercy of God speaks, brethren. So many things that go ahead stand against us. I tell you the truth. We don't know how we get there. We don't know how God fight this battle. We all we know that we went to bed, we wake up. So many things that happen when we shut our eyes. You see somebody boasting of the power. You see somebody boasting of what they can afford. You see somebody boasting of what they have. When they shut their eyes to sleep, they are gone. They don't know the mercy of God. Today, during my devotion time, as I was in worship, the Lord opened my eyes. <laughs> I saw this demonic creature seated and waiting. In my head, I'm like, what is he waiting for? Brethren, we have so many eyes of the enemy waiting to accuse us. The enemy is watching, looking for when we will sin against God, against God for us, for them to strike. If God opens our eyes, if we see the amount of demonic forces looking for a loophole against us, we don't know the amount of great cloud of witness accuse us, waiting to accuse us before God. The grace of God keep carrying us along. There you see somebody because he was opportune or she was opportune to help somebody. He or she was opportune to maybe pray for somebody, something happened. And you see them, they start taking glory. Ah, they don't know the mercy of God. May God forgive us, as many of us, anyone that stands to take God's glory. There are so many things that I will look back to the brethren. If I look back, honestly, I see how far God has brought me, brought us. When I look at it, what I say, Lord, this is your hand, is the mercy of God. We didn't work for it. We don't even deserve it. It's the mercy of God. People take this mercy of God for granted. People boast because they were able to buy one something that is material that in the next two or three years, the value is gone. People take pride in material things. And you see them boasting and look at them. They, take, they want to take God's glory. They don't know the mercy of God that carried them along. Brethren, the mercy of God speaks. The mercy of God intervened. We don't deserve it. There was a serious attack I got three days ago. I woke up. I said, something happened. Lord, what was that? Something happened. What was that? I saw bruises. I said, what happened on my body? I said, what happened? I noticed there was a serious battle. And I got up. I said, why well, God, they didn't take my life. The life of my family, we are alive. Thank you for your mercy that endures forever. Then it was today, <laughs> during my devotion, I saw one just seated and waiting. I said, really? So you want to attack this, this hard? Just that one, the Lord opened my eyes. What about other ones we did not see? The mercy of God speaks. The mercy of God intervenes in those things we don't even know how. The mercy of God go beyond us. Even those challenging, difficult times, brethren, the mercy of God speaks. His angels go ahead and carry out assignments. So many have lost the glory of God. You know how, why? They refuse to listen. They refuse to be patient. They refuse to let the word of God guide them. When the Spirit of God correct, convict, convict, people keep doing what they want to do. What will the Holy Spirit do? If people, he will pull back. Only the mercy of God will be carrying them. The mercy, their life just is just the grace. It's just the grace of God carrying them until they will come to the path where they will know the truth. Then they make a decision. I see people open their mouths, cause a human being God has created. I see people open their mouths, say so many negative things against God's own creation. And look at them, they don't know what they're doing because they don't know the mercy of this God. The goodness of this God is beyond human comprehension. People take advantage of his goodness, not knowing that it's his mercy that is carrying us. As the Bible says, his mercy endures forever. Even Matthew 5, 7 said, Blessed are the merciful, 
for they will be shown mercy. This is where we see a lot of people that are so kind. They don't retaliate. They let it go. There are some people that will say so many things about them. <clears throat> they will wait for you. So they look for when to get that, get and target you. Are they blessed? This is what the Bible says. Anyone that goes for vengeance, look at what the book of Matthew chapter 5, 7 says. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown what? Mercy. This is where a true born again stands. When the love of God met your heart, you see yourself that the life I will live, we don't even deserve it. It doesn't belong to us. So when you are dealing with your brothers and sisters, whatever they do, let it go. Forgive. Don't pray, don't give yourself hard time because when you give yourself trouble, somebody did something to you, somebody did something to you, you remember, you see, when you don't pray to God to remove it from your heart, you are the one troubling yourself. When you come in the arena where that person is, definitely your body, won't be at peace. Anger will rise. That's why when somebody does something to us, brethren, we wait. Go to God, Lord, give me. Even if you hurt so much, what you pray is, give me the mind to let go, to forgive. Help me to forgive this person. Father, help me remove this from my mind. Because the devil will keep bringing it for you to prepare to vengeance, for you to prepare to go for war, for you to prepare what you will do. Oh, people don't know one thing that the mercy of God is the one carrying us. When I look at that creature, I just look, I'm like, what do you want? That's how it is for everyone. If the Lord open your eyes, you see a lot of forces looking for a way to accuse you before God. They are accusers of brethren. Satan is a manipulative liar. The mercy of God will speak for as many that have mercy, that show mercy and forgiveness to others, show people mercy. There was years back, years back, um, my senior sister used to have a, a laundry guy that, you know, take care of her clothes. So a day came, robbers attacked this guy. They stole all the clothes. People give this young man a lot of expensive fabrics he maintained for people. People, they stole all these clothes. So my senior sister went there to get her clothes. The man was just crying. My sister said, what are you talking about? Then she gave him a lot of clothes. My senior sister got angry and came home. She was very angry. So her, uh, somebody we know that is a family friend that, is related, that knows this man came with this man. And they, I observed them. They were talking to my sister before I came in. I just saw my sister. She said, okay, you can go. It's all right. I was just watching. The, the guy said, you can give me clothes. I'll wash for a long time. My sister said, it's okay. Just go. When you see this, my sister, when she gets angry, you think that she pulled down the wall. But she have a good heart. And I asked her what happened. She told me what happened. And she forgave this man. And this was not quite long. The, the way the Lord visited her in her business, because she had, a, she had a cosmetic business. The Lord visited her brethren. When you show people mercy, the Lord will go beyond you, and his mercy will even speak bigger than the one you have forgiven others. But there are people that don't care and take advantage of this God's mercy. But the hardened religious person operating with human nature to control and intimidate will realize when he or she ends up in total condemnation of fire and brimstone. Look at Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters, all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. If I should go back, anyone that have mercy, we obtain mercy. How does this person know that they have mercy? That they have accepted Christ and repented and 
become born again. It is the Lord that convicts the heart. You see, this is the forgiveness and love that come in Christ. Anybody can die for anybody. What we are talking, anybody can choose to die for somebody. But we are talking about the, going through the narrow path of Christ, in Christ, to forgive your brother. To look at your brother and sister with the love of God. You won't, you won't be troubled. You will, you will not be hurt because when you have the time to give somebody mercy, forgiveness, because it's of the love of God, definitely yours will go beyond the one human being has done. There are people, <clears throat> may God have mercy. I want to speak and encourage every one of us today, please keep yourself separate for the Lord. Whatever that is going on in your life, always give God thanks. He's the one that makes the way where there's no way. You will see there are things you'll be crying to God and praying to God for. God is a long-suffering God. It will take a while. But when that time comes, the Lord will give it to you when he wants to give it to you. When, when he will give it to you and you will not forget him. A lot of people, I said it last time, a lot of people want millions of things to happen. But there are things you will get. You will totally forget God. And this person will not turn around to be warmongers sorcerers, idolaters, liars. They will choose their own way, not the way of God. They will create a self-righteousness for themselves because they feel that they have gotten all that. That's why the Bible said it's hard for a rich man to pass through a, through the mouth of the, of the needle. A camel can pass, but the wealthy that have pride in their money cannot pass through that narrow path. I pray the Lord help us today as we are sharing this word. I want you to reflect back. And as you woke up this day, Father, thank you. I want you to pray. Father, thank you for showing me mercy today. Thank you for waking up this day. Thank you for this new life. And help me to forgive everyone that wronged me. And help me to show mercy to everyone that hurts me in Jesus' name. Pray for yourself. Say, Father, help me not to forget your mercy over us. Father, help me to remain merciful so that I will continue to obtain mercy from you. Pray that, Father, help me that the life I have in Christ, I will not see myself, but I continue to see Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. And pray so my children, my family, my brothers, my sisters, my spouses, I pray your mercy visit us. Brethren, pray for yourself that the mercy of God will visit your family. Your, the mercy of God will intervene for that son, that daughter that don't understand what your love is. Father, I pray your mercy touch them. Your mercy visit them and deliver them from any lifestyle that does not honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear loving Father, I pray for your glory over every one of us today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your loving kindness. Jesus died in our place. Thank you, Father God, that your word has come forth and we receive life in this world today in Jesus' name. As we go out today, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit leaders we remain in you as we obtain mercy we continue to show others mercy help us not to bear grudges help us not to look at our brothers and sisters with eyes of hatred help us father god that we will not look at material things to be things of of, of our soul but rather help us not to look at material things the way people worship material things so we reject the life of of materialism we reject walking by sight we reject the spirit that come with false teachings and false doctrine in jesus name help every one of us today father in the name of jesus lead us to walk in obedience in mercy help us to live a life of forgiveness help us to show mercy to our brothers and sisters and help us to remain in your word and in you in Jesus' name we pray. I stand to take authority against every powers of darkness that gather to trouble any soul here, that gather to trouble any life. I come against you by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. In the name of Jesus, I break your chains. I say, lose your grips and hold. In Jesus' name, amen.
Father, Lord, take over every life. Please, Father, help us not to walk by pride. Remove every life of pride of Satan. Remove it from us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage everyone, please. God has been so faithful. God has been so kind. Don't look at what you have and be puffed up. It's not the love of God. Take time, read the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It talk of the love of God. It does not vaunt itself. It does not puff up. Please don't bring yourself high. Don't, don't start seeing yourself. Please put your eyes in Christ, the utter definition of our faith. Then you will not keep seeing yourself. Don't, don't pop yourself up like what I'm trying to say is when you talk, talk with grace. When you talk, talk with the love of God. When you talk, don't talk as if power is in your hand because this person you will come across something that is not good. That you turn around to be shame. Don't talk as if you are God, right? You, as if you are too righteous. You have power and authority over anything. No, don't talk like that. Blessed are the merciful, for we shall obtain mercy. When you live this life, see yourself that God has given me mercy to be alive today. It's not my power. We see when you talk, you will see that you don't, you talk, with humility, you talk with love. When you see your brother, your sister, your spouse, people that are around you, you talk with the fear of God, knowing fully well that God has been so merciful to me. So when I talk, I talk to people with the love of God so that God will mercy will continue that. I will not judge, I will not condemn. I forgive people that hurt me. I show them mercy. I show them mercy. Even if they waste my stuff and throw my stuff away, I will not kill them. I will show them mercy because the mercy of God is upon us as well. So this is my advice to somebody, somebody that have pride. Please, you talk with pride. You talk that you know you can do this, you can do that. Please change from today. Be talking. When you talk, talk with the grace of God that the life you live doesn't even belong to you. It belongs to him that has given you the life so that the mercy of God will continue to show over you in Jesus' name. God bless you, my brothers, my sisters. Continue to live in the word of God. Continue to live with mercy. Forgive everyone that hurt you. Don't keep carrying what somebody told you in your head and start thinking and cursing. No, no, it does not benefit. It does not bring mercy. You know that you, this person will be hurting themselves. You will hurt yourself when you see people around. And you see, it does not increase. It does not make somebody increase. This person will be at a particular place, stagnant, because what they are cooking up in their heart is revenge, pain, anger. They see themselves. No, that is not the life of Christ. Let the love of God continue to shine in your heart in everything you do. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Anywhere you go, Please, in your life, live a life of forgiveness. Don't bear grudges. You will experience peace. You will experience peace that is that is greater than anything. You will find yourself living young and in good health. That is what the love and mercy of God will give others. We receive it in return. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for being a part of this remarkable journey with Catherine Favor Worldwide Evangelical Outreach. We hope that our shared experience has ignited a flame within you, one that burns brightly with love and devotion for Christ. Follow and subscribe to our social media platforms, Facebook slash YouTube slash Instagram slash TikTok, Catherine Favor Worldwide Evangelical Outreach, website www.foutreach.org. Thanks for watching.